Welcome to this session looking at Accordance Bible Software. Today we're specifically going to be talking about um, how to look up words using the Greek lexicon feature of Accordance. So let's start from scratch if we're just looking at our display window. I have here the Greek Bible, which is Septuagint, and the Greek New Testament. Um, I have the NRSV, which I like using. I have the NET translation, the NLT. You can use whatever you want. You can put in NIV, ESV, um, w whatever you use the most, and um, just have them up as kind of a display. Notice they're all tagged, um, not the NLT, but these other texts are tagged, so it'll show what the corresponding word is in that um, translation. So I'm just going to kind of pick a, a word that you might want to look up to get more information about, yes, there are translations here, and yes, they tell you something about what the translation committee thought this word should be translated as. So, for example, if we look at the word semnos, um, it is translated in NRSV as serious. It's translated in NET as dignified. It's one of these words that's kind of hard to get exactly right what this word means in English. It has something to do with holiness, something to do with honor, respect, dignity. Um, serious is probably not a great translation. Honorable, maybe closer to it, but we might want more information. We're going to go to a lexicon because a lexicon is a, a Greek word dictionary that has a bunch of information that will help you better understand what this word means and how it's used in different texts. So what I do is I've set it up for live click and I can explain these features in another video, but that means that when I click on it, uh, one kind of on Mac, uh, it's the kind of left click. Uh, when I click on it, it's going to bring up some fields. It's going to bring up uh, a bunch of primary text, which we're not going to use today. So I'm going to close that out. Uh, it's going to bring up this top window that I expanded now is the lexicons. Um, these are the ones that I own. They have more that you can purchase, but I uh, went out of my way to get the ones that I really wanted to use. Um, I'm going to change a couple settings here just to make this easier to see. Um, and and it's set up so that it's going to run through. So these are kind of more information, but these are the main ones here that I use. Um, it's going to set it up as running from one entry to the next, which means it opens up the resource exactly to what you want and in all of those lexicons that you've chosen. So I've actually created a group of lexicons. I have more. These are the ones that I want to use on a regular basis. So it's kind of a preloaded mini library that I've told it to use. So this is BDAG, which is kind of the industry standard. I don't love it. I feel like um, uh, it's heavily uh, interpreted or um, I don't want to use the word bias, but I, I don't particularly love uh, this, but it is what is most commonly cited, the most commonly used in New Testament studies. So it's giving you some information generically pertaining to evoking special respect. And then these letters designate sub- uh, subcategories here, worthy of respect, worthy of reverence, and so forth. It's giving you some other forms, uh, sem notes, to look at as well. But then it jumps to the next entry in um, a different dictionary, Lunida. I like Lunida more. I like its approach. Uh, that's going to be more complicated thing to talk about how the approaches are different. But I like its semantic domain approach. I feel like the definitions are a little crisper. Um, so here, pertain to appropriate, be befitting behavior and implying dignity and respect. Um, and then it jumps to an, another resource. This is actually kind of like a big word study, New International Dictionary, New Testament Theology, and Exegesis. Um, it's going to cluster words together and talk about them as concepts. It's going to give you a head idea, and then it's going to go into Greek literature, Jewish literature, that's the JL, some of these word meanings used in the New Testament. It's going to give you a little bibliography. Another uh, helpful theological lexicon is Speak. Uh, Speak wrote this lexicon. It's not comprehensive. It doesn't have everything. It might have the word you want. It might not. Um, and so it happens to have it here, which is nice. And, it, and it's basically giving you one person's opinion. And, and Speak is really good. I've, I've cited Speak a lot. Um, I feel like the, the information here is, is really accurate. Not 100%, but, but in the majority, definitely. And then LSJ is another key resource that um, you want to look at. It's actually of kind of Greek literature more broadly, far beyond um, just the New Testament, just early Christian literature. 
but it's going to give you a broader perspective. It's, it's kind of old school, so it uses older English like awful, which I don't think Semnos really captures very well. But it gives you some helpful definitions when you're looking at the broader beyond Christianity world of uh, Greek literature. Um, talking here about properly of certain gods. Um, and then it gives you more specific things here in a bad sense, proud, haughty, um, and, and, and some other uh, kinds of things. Again, you can buy whatever set that you want to use for accordance of, uh, you have to kind of go out of your way to buy BDAG. I did that because it is such an important resource. Um, a, a certain, I'll talk about packages later on, but some packages will come with stuff that you can use that's kind of the cheaper end stuff that um, will just get, get the ball rolling in terms of using a lexicon. But I re highly recommend these. BDAG, Lunida, um, I did go out of my way to buy NIDNTTE, uh, I love Speak, I use that, LSJ is pretty affordable now because it's been around for a long time. Um, it's helpful to compare these different uh, lexicons, um, it, it's not like one is right and the other is wrong, they're going to give you different kind of angles on um, studying a word. And then you look at all this and then you make your assessment after you look at the context of your particular passage. So. I hugely value this. It's one of the main things that I use accordance for is consulting Greek lexicons.